Welcome to this week's Over 50 and Flourishing. You are my guest. I put out a request on social media asking for you to leave me a comment, a question. I wanted to include you in this show. I always want Over 50 and Flourishing to be about you. I want you to have a voice, to have a say in what it is that we're doing here on this podcast and also to offer any comments. So we have a ton. Courtney is with me. We have a ton (laughs) of wonderful, wonderful messages to get through, things for me to answer, things for us to listen to into process. So what do you say we launch right in? Let's jump right in. Caller right. number one. Caller number one. <laughs> what is your question? Yes. All right. So here we go. Hello, Dominique. I'm Sman Davis. I'm a follower of yours for years now, and I've been watching you blossom and becoming this amazing um, social media pro and expert, and I'm loving it. Um, I don't really have a question, but more of what of encouragement and um, comments. So just to let you know that um, I'm, I'm a little younger, I'm just 35 years old, but I'm just obsessed with your content just because, you know, there are so many things that um, I wish my younger one knew. And when I watch your um, your, your, your video, your, your podcast and everything, I learned so much about, you know, those changes in our body, um, the relationships, the way you are with your kids, your mom. And yeah, please just keep sharing, keep inspiring us, keep teaching us. Like, I want you to know all about menopause. I want you to know mm-hmm. all about dating in your 50. I want you to know all about love making after, you know, 40. Like, yes, that's all I want you to know. So, Thank you so much for being you. Um, I love this concept. I love you. Good luck. And uh, thank you. Oh, I love her. First yeah. of all, that accent is the bomb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't it's know where beautiful. she's from, but yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful accent. And what a sweet comment. You know, the first thing that struck me is she said, I'm young, I'm 35. And I'm always amazed by the age range that I have Mm -hmm. when it comes to either the YouTube format or the podcast. I mean, I hear from women in their 20s and 30s, I hear from women in their 80s. And so it's kind of mind blowing that this content has such wide appeal. Absolutely. But what I love about it, and, and when I listened to her, the first thing that it made me think about was, when I was growing up, And when I was, you know, in my 20s and 30s and sort of building my life and my career and making family decisions and, you know, having a child and and all of that, we didn't have social media like we do today. I I mean, at all. I know you think Courtney's like, so I cannot conceive of this world, (laughs) (laughs) right? There was no scrolling. There was no liking. There was no hearting. There was no, there was none of that. So if you wanted to learn about something, I mean, you would watch the news, you would watch a specific show on cable you would buy a book. But now you have all this content at the ready that's so specific to what it is that you're looking for. And I wish that I had that. You know, Mm -hmm. we always talk about the ups and downs of social media and all of this online content. But to hear from somebody who's 35 and she's already seeking information about midlife, about relationships, about menopause, what she's doing is she's teeing herself up for success Mm -hmm. because she's already like onboarding all of this content and being aware so she knows what to think about, what to ask, what to do when she's confronted with all of these things that aren't foreign to her anymore, but now are familiar. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah. I love to have, I you know, young Completely. I was going to say, I <laughs> consider myself in that. And every time I talk to you or we hang out or I'm listening to the podcast, you're producing, YouTube editing, whatever, I'm always mm-hmm. learning something. And I'm always even sharing it with my friends or with my sister, or my family or whoever. Yes. And so I completely agree that this definitely just transcends. There's not there's not an age limit on any of this content. Yeah. Um, and I know most of it is definitely geared towards women, but I think even, you know, we've done some episodes that even like men can listen. We've said, you know, share with the men in your life. So yeah. I think it's definitely cool that it's like just It's everyone. for everybody. You yeah. know, it's so funny you say that. So there's a couple that I've become friendly with here at um, the apartment community where I live and she's reading my book mm-hmm. and 
It was so funny. They had the jacket cover off because I I think that they didn't want to, you know, show the world that they're kind of reading my book poolside. <laughs> and he's reading it too. Oh, I and love it was that. so funny because we were talking in the swimming pool and he said, Hey, have you ever thought about writing a midlife book for guys? And I said, Well, I said, I don't quite have the male perspective, but yeah. I did interview somebody, Greg Scheinman, yep. the a midlife male. I said, I yeah. think that's something that you could relate to. But he said, I was reading, I'm reading, I love this. He said, I'm reading the book with her because I want to understand where she is and where her headspace is. And he said, I've gotten so much out of it. Wow. And I thought, all right, that's cool. That's amazing. Amazing. But I think, you know, and it's it's funny that we're saying it's amazing because I feel like so often women want to tap into the minds of a man, right? And yes. we think we're always talking about it. And what are they thinking and whatever? And it's not very often that you hear the flip side of that. In my experience that yeah. a man's going to take the time to read a book about a woman in midlife. <laughs> Right. That it really has nothing to do with him, but he knows that his partner, it's all about her and that he wants to just kind of tap into that more. Yes. And amazing. the interesting thing is, is that she's younger, he's older, but for the same thing, she's reading the book about making bold moves yeah. and, 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 you know, taking these leaps of faith and, and beauty and feeling good about yourself. So she's embracing that even though she's not at that point yet. Mm-hmm. And he's older and he's like, Hey, I want a book like this for me. <laughs> So, I, I thought that was that. cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I totally have your book displayed in my apartment. Uh, with the jacket cover on and everything. <laughs> no shame. <laughs> no shame at all. <laughs> um, okay, cool. We will take our next caller. Okay. Hi, Dominique. I am calling. My name is Chrissy and I'm calling from Connecticut. And I love your podcast and your YouTube and all the things that you're doing, including your book. Um, I am a woman in the middle. I just turned 60 and went through all the things, menopause. I unfortunately went through a divorce, um, and am just really trying to find my place. But one thing that I needed to add is that I'm also a breast cancer survivor and trying to redefine yourself, um, being in the middle, but also adding on that next layer of having a health issue is something that I'd really just like to hear more about. And maybe you might be able to have a guest or two that can talk about kind of coming out of that darkness as well. Keep up the great work. I really, really enjoy all that you're doing. Be blessed. Mm, Thank you. And blessings to you, my friend in Connecticut. And first of all, just Congratulations on your survivorship, yes. first and foremost. Um, I can only imagine the place of fear that put you in, um, especially during a time of such transition and turmoil. Um, I am I am so with her on more content about dealing with health issues during this time mm-hmm. in life. Yeah. Uh, you know, it it tends to it tends to rear its ugly head during probably the most stressful times in our lives. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that, you know, when we are going through so much and our immune systems are weaker, we are more susceptible to having things happen to us. And, you know, you never know the cause or the why, and it's really not for us because I think you can lose your mind in trying to figure that out. Yeah. But it's the how. It's yep. it's the how am I going to handle this? How am I going to maneuver through it? How am I not going to get stuck in a place of fear, but to be able to move forward in a place of faith, mm-hmm. in a place of encouragement, mm-hmm. in a place of hope and possibility. And mm-hmm. I think that that's <clears throat> that's probably a struggle for a lot of people who have gone through some serious health scares. I know your mother has yeah. as well, and you can you can speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. My mother is also a breast cancer survivor. Um, she got diagnosed in 2020, so mm-hmm. it was a wild year for everybody because yep. that's when COVID hit. And then on top of it, that's when she got diagnosed in February, and it was like right, right before the world shut down. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can speak to a little bit of her experience was just finding people that were going through the same things, Mm -hmm. I think really helps in times like that. Um, she joined a lot of Facebook groups, um, because that was her biggest thing. She was like, I can talk to my family. I can talk to my friends, but Mm -hmm. nobody knows what I'm going through or how scared I am or what I'm thinking or nobody could even answer her questions. We didn't have any idea. So 
she joined a lot of Facebook groups, um, connected with a lot of people, was even mm -hmm. talking on the phone with different women like around the world that yes. just they everyone just wants to offer advice. I've she found such a great supportive community within that. Mm -hmm. So um, and even, you know, honestly, like YouTubers and stuff like we I was home taking care of her and we were just at home. We would be watching content on YouTube yeah. or YouTubing different questions. Um, and it's maybe hard if you're not feeling the best, but I think um, for her staying busy really helped. If you just sit there and you kind of get in your head, it can become a lot. So she yep. stayed really busy throughout that time. So yeah. So I think even, you know, once you survived it, there's still a lot to unpack there. So yes. I would definitely say find, find a group, whether it's in person, online, there's mm -hmm. so many resources out there and just find people that have been through it because I think that with a lot of situations, right? Even if you've been through a divorce or a breakup or like, if you're not taught, you could talk to everybody, but unless you talk to someone that's been there or yes. is currently going through it, it just is so different. different. Like, I know. So yeah, so congratulations and super happy for you, but I would definitely say too, yeah. Um, yeah, just reach out to people. There's there's power in community, and I'm so glad you mentioned that. There's a charity that I've worked with for years here in Houston, mm -hmm. and I think they're nationwide, if I'm not mistaken, called CanCare. And what's so great about CanCare is that they will pair a cancer survivor of a specific type of cancer. It could even be a very specific type of breast cancer mm -hmm. with a survivor of that very oh, specific wow. type of cancer. It is, it's really quite phenomenal. That is really so cool. So you get exactly what you're talking about. You get that one-on-one -on -one yes. experience from mm -hmm. somebody who has walked the same walk, who's probably faced the same kind of treatments, the 100%. same kind of outcome. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of it. So look into CanCare in your community, C-A-N-C-A-R-E. Um, I'm 100% I'm with Courtney. I think yeah. you need to have somebody to talk to who has been where you've been. Mm -hmm. um, the podcast that I did with my friend, Holly, you know, yeah. Holly had a double mastectomy. She was considered high risk. She wasn't a breast cancer um, candidate, but she was told that the likelihood of her getting cancer was pretty high. So mm -hmm. she kind of did a preemptive strike, went through a lot of health consequences because of that. So if you want, you know, maybe that's a, a podcast for you to listen to as well. I can promise you, Courtney and I are already brainstorming for the yes. month of October, yes. bringing on just a wide variety of guests and content talking about this specific mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. So trust me, there's more to come on that. Yeah, it's something I think that more women go through or yes. know someone that's gone, gone through oh, it. Totally. You know, everyone, I feel know like somebody you know somebody or you've or gone has. through it yourself. So yeah, yeah I think it's a, a great subject to bring to this platform. And me too. Just unpack it all. Yeah. All right. Um, but I think we should take a little break. <laughs> We've hit that time. Okay. Two callers in. Many, many more to yeah. go. It is your show. You are my guest on Over 50 and Flourishing. And we'll be right back. Want to smell better? Naked? Let's face it. Our underarms aren't the only place we have odor. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Lumi whole body deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. My favorite thing about Lumi are their body wipes. They're great for travel or keeping in your car or your purse when you're on the go. They're the perfect refresher for a busy day. I use Lumi throughout the day and it's seriously amazing in this Houston heat. I smell so good all day regardless of what I'm doing. It keeps me fresh, smelling good, and feeling more confident. Clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. How does this work? Unlike some deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts, more like a pre-odorant. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. Not only does Lumi keep the odor away, it will have you smelling even better than before. My favorite scent is Peony Rose. People will literally compliment me whenever I'm wearing it. The Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for our new listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi Starter Pack with code OVER50 at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code OVER50. 
Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. The reviews are in. Honey Love came out on top for best wedding day shapewear. With wedding season upon us, this is the ad you've been waiting for. Whether you are a bride, a guest, or looking for an everyday fit, Honey Love is your go to for all things shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. We have an exclusive offer for the over 50 and flourishing listeners. You can get 20% off your entire order with our exclusive link, honeylove.com slash over 50. Support the show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash over 50. Hey everyone, it's Courtney. I consider myself to be a bit of a curvier gal. So for me, I love wearing shapewear under dresses, but was never fully satisfied with any other brands. I would always see the shapewear underneath and you can see lumps and bumps and I just feel like it was doing the exact opposite of what I wanted. That is until Honey Love. Honey Love has targeted compression technology that distinguishes between areas where you want more support and areas that you may need less compression. Their shapewear targets and sculpts your midsection without squeezing your natural curves. It's designed to work with your body and not against it. Genius. My personal favorite is the Super Power Short. It helps sculpt and smooth from stomach to thigh by offering just the perfect amount of compression. You won't have to worry about it rolling down, which is unheard of in shapewear, thanks to the flexible boning that's hidden in the side seams. Treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off, honeylove.com slash over 50. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back to Over 50 and Flourishing. You are my guest today. I'm listening to your questions and comments for the first time right here. I think we're on to number three. Caller number three. Here we go. Okay. Hi, Dominique. My name is Laura Guerra, and I am from Rio Grande City, Texas, down here in the Valley, South Texas. Um, I'm like six, maybe six and a half, six hours from Houston. Uh, my question to you is, one, is how do you stay so beautiful? You are a very beautiful woman. I admire you every time I see you. My second question is, how did you deal with, you know, that divorce after, um, to explain to your, you know, to your, to your family what you were going to go through? Um, I know your mom is there to support you. I'm an only child like you. My mom supports me all the way, but it's so hard, you know, with my two daughters to explain to them that they have this little vision that one day I'm going to go back with their dad, but that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. But what advice would you give me? You know, how, you know, how can I tell them that, no, it's not going to happen um, I have a tough, I have, you know, it, it's hard for me to communicate with them. Um, that's my question. Um, thank you. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, first of all, thank you for a very sweet and incredibly generous compliment. Um, but I really want to address her issue first. I, I can't give a specific answer because I don't know the ages of the children yeah, involved. And that right. really dictates how you go about handling things and, and what's said. You know, yeah. older children can understand more because they've seen more. And I think they deserve more. Younger children, there's only so much that they can process mm -hmm. um, and, and how things are said. And granted, it's always ideal if both parents who are ending the marriage are on the same page in how they speak to the children, but that is never a guarantee. And that's, that's where it gets really tough because things can become very divisive. And really the children, the children suffer the ultimate fallout if the parents are letting the emotionality of the moment dictate how they're talking to their kids mm -hmm. and using children as pawns or a weapon in, in an area where they don't belong. And I'm very, very sensitive to that. I do not believe children should be involved in anything divorce related except to be told in an honest and respectful way, in an age-appropriate way, what's happening, why to a degree, and that they are safe 
They are loved and they will be protected always. And they are never the cause of what happened. Children just need to feel safe. I would suggest in her case, um, talk to a counselor. You know, get some professional advice on how to handle this. Let somebody know and understand what's transpired already, what's mm -hmm. been said already, and get some guidance on what needs to be said and not said. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's more power in that yeah. than oversharing. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Yeah, for sure. Um, and in the back half of our question, it was kids and family. So how did you yeah. deal with telling just being honest, yeah. you know, just honesty. Honesty is always the best policy. Yeah. You just have to share. And sometimes, you know, family can be a little blindsided. Um, you know, I, for one, was like this. I mean, I didn't share all the nitty gritty of mm -hmm. what was going on in my life. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, I'm one of those that tends to internalize it a little bit more, process it on my own talk to people who I feel can be helpful. I think sometimes if there's too much chatter, yeah. too much outside voice, mm -hmm. whether it's family or friends, they may have may have your best intentions, but not necessarily the best advice. Mm -hmm. So I tend to limit what I say until it's time to make a decision. And sometimes that can catch people by surprise. Yeah. Um, but you know, the people who need to know things, I think it's very important to communicate. Obviously, your spouse. Your partner, you know, that's where openness, honesty, transparency, um, all of that needs to be just laid out. There should be no surprises in that arena whatsoever, yeah. you know, so that you're clearly articulating things. But then I think once you've made a decision, share openly, share what you feel comfortable with. You know, this is why. And more than anything, I just need your love and support during this time of transition. Yeah. That is the greatest gift that you can give me, whether you understand or not, whether you agree or not. I need your love, your kindness, and your support. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I can't speak much to divorce, but I think with you, like with um, talking to family members or talking to anyone really, a friend or a family member, um, something I found helpful when sharing deep things like that is to know why you're sharing. Are mm -hmm. you sharing because you need someone just to listen or are you looking for mm -hmm. advice? And I think starting the conversations out like that, like yep. I just need to vent to you. I don't need don't need an opinion, don't need advice. Yes. I just need to vent. But if you are, then you can also say, I really would like to hear your opinion on this, blah, 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 Absolutely. blah. Absolutely. Sometimes and I just think people um, just, they naturally give opinions or give advice you know they feel like they should yeah. be helping or fixing and sometimes all you just you know you just need someone to listen yes and so i think just kind of if you are going to talk to people to know what you want out of it mm -hmm. um Set and just stage. communicate with that yeah 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 and i, w I wish i wish you well i really do my yeah. friend in south texas i wish you well you'll get through it yeah hello dominique this is lynn butler from georgia and also alabama I'm 44 years old, and I'm moving to Uktavik, Alaska, in two weeks. I'm curious as to what skin care I can use, since I'm a southern gal, for lotions or pomades, anything for dry skin, uh, what to do when there's absolutely no sun, how to fight the blues when it's only dark time 24-7. I can't wait to hear from you, and I can't wait to watch your podcast thingy on July 24th. Talk to you guys soon. Can't wait. Bye -bye. Oh my gosh, Lynn from Atlanta and Georgia and now going to Alaska. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> wow. You know, I've never been to Alaska. Yeah. I'm dying to go. Mm -hmm. I hear it's absolutely exquisite. Me too. You know, when she was saying those things about not having daylight, I almost panicked because I'm such a creature of light mm -hmm. and sun. I thrive in it. Even when it's, you know, dark and cloudy here after a while, I start to mm -hmm. feel antsy. Yeah. So you know, I know that there are um, artificial lights that you can have and probably should have to help regulate your body mm -hmm. so that it knows when daytime is and when nighttime is. And so there are probably things that you can buy to put in your house yeah. to help regulate that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's going to be such an adjustment. It is. 
right? Going from what you're normally accustomed. And she's a Southern girl. So she's used to sun and heat. And um, I would have heat lamps all over my home, all over, just (laughs) cooking it up just so I could feel warm and toasty and and daylight. So that, I mean, I don't know what that's going to feel like. You know, she'll have to get back to us and tell us. Regarding skincare, man, I would probably just soak in a vat of coconut oil. (laughs) All the time. Really? I mean, eucerin or just things that are so super Mm -hmm. emollient because Mm -hmm. I know on a winter day here, I get dry and and like snake scale skin. I can't imagine what's going to be going on in Alaska. Yeah, I cannot. So like any kind of salve, any kind of a salve with an oil in it. Body oils. Yes, mm -hmm. just oils. Mm -hmm. And then immediately, because it's going to be cold, you know, put on like your long johns or whatever, just so that it's binding to the Mm -hmm. skin is probably the best thing you can do, but just super heavy emollient emollient creams. Yeah. Um, you got to be careful with like retinols and stuff that you normally do in the sun because anything that's going to cause peeling or flaking is only going to irritate the skin. So just, you know, your normal skincare game is going to go out the window <laughs> and you're just going to have to figure it out. Honestly, I would talk to the locals there. And I would say, hey, you know, what's working for you? What do you, and they probably even have special products up there. Or even look on YouTube for an Alaskan uh, influencer. Right, (laughs) or what to use when in Alaska. A thousand percent. There's definitely content out there on that for sure. And for me, I would have to (laughs) self-tan. <laughs> just the face because that's the only thing that's gonna just, show yeah that's true but i would just have to even just like look like i've been in the sun <laughs> or just stand next to your tanning lamp inside something oh my gosh i could never <laughs> wow. but that sounds like a really exciting journey i know and good for her seriously good for you um okay next caller hi my name is connie rice i'm from gross Bank, texas I loved your podcast uh, with your friend, the doctor on hormones, mm-hmm. menopause. It was fantastic. Gave me a lot to think about. Love your lips on Facebook and your podcast. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, menopause is probably, I think when I first started doing Q&As on the YouTube mm-hmm. side, more questions about menopause. Always always came in. And I knew that that was going to be a repeating subject on this podcast. And in fact, we've got um, Dr. Mary Claire Haver, who will be coming on the week before this podcast Mm -hmm. airs. And so I highly, highly encourage you if you missed it or haven't seen it, go back and listen to it or watch it on YouTube. Um, I, we are so blessed here in Houston to have Uh such incredible leaders in this space, women who were traditional OB-GYNs who broke camp, and and it it happened to both of them, both um, Dr. Mary Claire Haver and Susan Hardwick-Smith, both OB-GYNs, you know, been practicing forever. They hit midlife. They realized that they weren't being the kind of caretakers to other women in midlife that they wanted to be. They also were shocked that they didn't have the answers and the training and completely pivoted and shifted in in their careers. And I love that. I love that. So, you know, there will be many, many um, resources on this podcast and the conversation will continue just as that whole space continues to develop and evolve. And there are more things available to women and more conversations being had about it. Yeah. I totally agree. I've seen a lot of comments um, on social media and YouTube saying like, you are so lucky that these people are in Houston or like I'm I'm debating flying to Houston because it's just, it's not as accessible as it should be. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I agree. Very lucky to have them in Houston. I know it. Good morning, Dominique. This is Eileen. I've watched you for such a long time. You're such an inspiration. And I listen just about to everything you say. So 66, retired grandma. Mom, wife, and trying to establish myself in my life today. Got weight gain, sadness, uh, trying to look forward to the future, but be present. Just some advice on your day-to-day activity to keep yourself happy and healthy, trying to stay healthy. Mm. So appreciate you, Dominique. Thank you. Oh, and good morning. (laughs) <laughs> good morning. She called at 8 a.m. <laughs> oh, well, good morning. Yeah. Um, that's very sweet. Yes. Yeah, so she sounds like she is in that space of realizing that self-care is very, very important and trying to take care of herself, um, which is, to me, step one 
in anything in life. You know that just from, you know, hearing me talk and yeah. reading my book. Um, you are your most valuable investment. And there are so many things that change in our bodies, in our minds, in everything as we go through midlife and into our 60s. Um, and you don't, look, you're never going to be what you were. And there has to be that acceptance of I'm, I'm never going to be, you know, 20 again. I'm never going to be 30 again. But you can be the best version of 40, the best b version of 50, the best version of 60. Does it mean digging in the heels harder? Does it mean more work? Does it mean more discipline? Absolutely. Does it mean that, that your body may have changed and is responding to food in different ways? Does it mean you've got to change your eating habits and how you eat and when you eat? Most likely. Mm -hmm. But it's all attainable if you want it badly enough. And so I just encourage her to keep exploring that journey, to keep prioritizing herself, you know, being a mom, being a grandmom, you know, plates are full, but there's always time for getting a good night's rest, for prayer and meditation, for movement and a workout, for researching nutrition and what's working for your body. And just, just do it because you're worth it. You know, you're, a lot of people depend on you, but most importantly, you depend on you. Mm -hmm. And you won't say it yourself, but if you need a good step one, read her book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because it really will give you a lot of inspiration, motivation, even if you, even if that becomes a part of like your daily routine. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to sit down, read a chapter, yeah. and then start my day. Or you know what I mean? Time mm -hmm. doing that. But life makeover. Thanks. We'll, we'll link it below. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next caller. Hello, Dominique. This is Mary Jo, and I'm from Akron, Ohio. First of all, I love your show and have used your recommendations on makeup, hair products, and it's a great learning experience, even at 73. Oh. My question is, using foundation, did I go to a powder foundation, or should I stay with this liquid foundation I have been using? And I, I like Chanel products. Mm. Uh, but what would you do underneath the eyes so you can't see all the wrinkles? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I get you, Mary Jo. <laughs> I get you. You know, there are um, some powder foundations. Laura Geller makes, she caters to an older audience. Mm -hmm. And she uses a, it's like a big palette and you, you can do a brush. I'm very, very weary about too much powder under the eyes, especially as we age. And I have even found that I have had to really, really back down mm -hmm. on how much concealer and powder I use under my eyes because it completely settles in. Um, there are some great formulations out there for mature skin. Mm -hmm. I'm still, I would say out of, out of all the concealers that I have, the It Bye Bye Under Eye, I'm still using the most, but the interesting thing is I'm using a lot less of it. Yeah. So it's a super creamy emollient um, concealer. And you take it and you have to rub it between your fingers. And I really focus on the area where I need the most concealing, which is which is the trough, the, the dark circle here. And I'll focus it and then I'll just kind of lightly sweep it out. And then I'll still use my favorite, that Laura Mercier Translucent Loose. It's been, I've been talking about it since 2014, for the love of God. I can't, I can't break camp. But I, I, you still have to set it with a tiny bit of powder, and it actually prevents it from, set it, which is an odd concept, but it does prevent it from settling too much into the yeah. lines. But you do need to set it, but I find less is more as we age. Regarding her question about whether she should switch from a liquid foundation to a powder, really depends on her skin type. I, I don't know unless I see her skin type. Yeah. Um, if you do a powder, maybe you have to do more moisturizing underneath that powder, maybe a special type of a um, primer. Yeah. That'll help. So it, it depends. What looks better on you? And, and also check yourself not on the inside, but outside. Mm -hmm. Natural light versus indoor light. And see what seems to settle less in the lines. What looks the most natural on you is where I would go. But if yeah. she's using Chanel, she's use, using a great product line. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. you use liquid foundation, right? Yes, I still use liquid. I have tried powder and I, I find it to be too dry. And I think it's because I use so much retinol in my skin. So my skin is naturally dry because mm -hmm. of the cell turnover that I still need to use liquid. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Next caller. Okay. Hi, it's Lisa in Friendswood, Texas calling. Um, here's my deal. So uh, it's like I'm paralyzed if I have a bad hair day. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so selfish. 
but it's like I don't want to do anything. I don't want to move and, and and do the things that I need to be doing. Instead, I'm looking on Google. Who can come? Who, where can I go to cut my hair? And it's ridiculous. And it's like, why? Why do I put myself through this? Mm. What would you do? I mean, how do you how do you inspire yourself? And how do you stop procrastinating? Because it's ridiculous. I'm 63 years old, and I don't feel it. But it's like, what the heck am I doing? You know, why am I beating myself up? Why am I so unhappy? What am I living in fear for? Mm. You know, I'm living in a situation where I can't stand the man I'm with. He is a good man, but it's like, what, 13 years? You know, what's this fear from? Mm. So that's what I would like to hear Mm. from you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, this is Lisa, Mm. Friendswood, Texas. Thank you, Lisa. Friendswood is just a community a little bit south of us. Um, wow, she unpacked a lot, Mm -hmm. but it's really all about one thing and it's about fear, fear of change, which is also something I wrote about a lot in life makeover a lot. And, you know, it's so interesting how she started with the hair and then it went into the relationship. And the one thing that I discuss a lot is beauty from the outside in Mm -hmm. that if you start making changes on the outside, it gives you this boldness and this confidence to start making deeper and more profound changes on the inside. Why? Because you're abandoning irrational fear. And that's what it is. It is it is the fear of what if. What if I don't like it? What if I'm not accepted? What if I don't feel as beautiful? What if I'm not as happy? Well, it sounds like you're not happy where you are right? So isn't it worth rolling the dice on those what ifs and seeing it play out? And what if you gain more confidence by making these decisions? What if you start feeling more like a badass because you did something about the things that are frustrating you in your life? And what if you actually get closer to the authentic you and who you were supposed to be? I think that we as women just get so locked and so stuck in either a imaginary version of what we think is beautiful. And maybe it's a past story of ourselves, right? From, from what we were told by parents, by past, you know, spouses, boyfriends or whatever, or friends. Or even like what used to look good, where now you, you are a different person and your body's changed and your face has changed. And it's like, and and you can't let go of that. Mm -hmm. And the whole bad hair day thing. You know what I do when I'm having a bad hair day? I put on a real cool hat. Courtney and I were just joking about that the other day. I literally tuck the hair behind the ears, mm-hmm. put on a hat. I get more compliments from wearing that stinking hat. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how frizzy or how bad the hair yep. is underneath. You do a hat and a pair of earrings and suddenly you're the cool chick. Coolest. Right? Yeah. So so there are ways around it. But if you are stuck in a hairstyle and you're, you're afraid of making a change, make a change. What is the worst thing that can happen? Mm-hmm. You don't like it? Well, okay, so now you're going to have to learn to manage it. Now you're going to have to learn to deal with it. Now you're going to have to learn to love and accept you for who you are and not a hairstyle, Mm -hmm. right? So that's already prompting so much growth in you because you are more than a hairstyle. You're more than a makeup look. You're more than an outfit. You are loved and beautiful for who you are and whose you are. Mm -hmm. So get out of that mindset of just being locked into a look. And I think when you start making those changes, you really start to get more confidence to be authentic in your relationships, to speak your feelings, to be truthful about things and to address things at a deeper level. And that's what I just encourage her to do. Yeah. I think that's a great place to take a break. Oh, you're right. It is commercial time. We'll be back right after this. I don't know about you, but I love to start my day with a flavorful quality cup of coffee. But too often we settle for burnt, messy, or mediocre drive through quality coffee. Spurging for the drive-thru can seem like the best option to add high-quality coffee to your day, but Cometeer changes everything with their hyper-fresh, flash-frozen coffee with incredible flavor that you can make in seconds wherever you are. When I first heard about flash-frozen coffee, I was a little skeptical, but after trying Cometeer, it is so easy to prepare. Within just a few seconds, you can have pour-over quality coffee, and I love how it tastes, especially Joe's coffee. I'm telling you, it's so easy to make. For hot coffee, just drop the puck of frozen coffee extract into your cup and add hot water to melt. It's that 
easy. And cleanup is a breeze because there are no grounds or dirty equipment. Oh, and the capsules are 100% recyclable and sustainable. Cometeer is even delivered in fully recyclable packaging. And I love that it's delivered right to my door on dry ice and keeps in my freezer until I'm ready for a cup. Join the future of coffee with Cometeer and get a curated starter pack of their most popular roasts. Go to cometeer.com slash over 50 to get a free eight pack and a travel mug when you sign up. That's a free eight pack of coffee and a travel mug when you sign up at C-O-M-E-T-E-E-R dot com slash over 50. Let's get back to the show. Are you tired of cycling through the endless amount of trending skincare products that all claim to smooth wrinkles, firm skin, and give you a youthful glow, but don't really deliver results at the end of the bottle? Well, you're in luck because support for today's episode comes from One Skin, founded by a team of four female PhD level longevity scientists with over 15 years of experience studying the biology of aging. After testing thousands of peptides, they discovered OS1. The OS1 peptide is scientifically proven to target aged, also called senescent cells, the main source of skin aging and actually reduces the biological age of skin by several years. Their flagship product, OS1 Face, is clinically validated to improve firmness, fine lines, and overall tone and appearance. Unlike most skincare products on the market, One Skin works deeper than surface level and is designed to promote healthier skin from the inside out. When you have healthier skin, you have better looking skin. Is your current skincare regimen clinically proven to reverse the molecular age of your skin? If not, give One Skin a try and see the difference. For a limited time, our listeners can get 15% off One Skin with our code OVER50 at oneskin.co. Hey everyone, Courtney again. I've said it before that people of all ages should be listening to this podcast and that's how I feel about skincare. You're never too late to start or too young to begin. Dominique tells me all the time to take care of my skin and really encourages a proactive start. I really love one skin and have started using it around my eye area. The skin around your eyes has actually been known to start aging faster than the rest of the skin on your face. So I'm being proactive, taking orders, and have seen a noticeable difference in less than two months. One Skin is for everyone that wants to prevent or reverse the signs of aging with a groundbreaking approach. One Skin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root cause of aging so skin behaves, feels, and appears younger. It's time for you to experience a new skin health routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code OVER50 at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with the code over 50. We only have one body, one skin, and only you can choose to make it better. Age healthy with one skin. We're back. We're back to Over 50 and Flourishing. It is the call-in show. I wanted you to be my guest today. And so far, the comments and the questions have been really meaningful and raw and sweet and wonderful. And I look forward to hearing more. We've got so many more. My gosh. So much more to get through. Yeah. I think it's so cool to actually hear people. I love to hear their voices. Yeah. It's like you're really, you know, able to have a conversation with them. And just, yeah, it's more than just like a comment section, you know? Yes. Love it. Same. Okay. Next caller. Hi, uh, Dominique. I am Sheila Fazio. I live in Michigan City, Indiana. I think you're absolutely beautiful inside and out. I am 61 years old, almost 62 at the end of the month, end of July. And um, I was wondering if you, um, what is your take on Botox, um, facials, um, with getting older, um, what do you believe in with them? skincare if Botox uh, is something that you do um, and what you would advise to us uh, women over 60. Okay, thank you so much, Dominique. Here at- so, Sheila, um, great question. I have not been shy about the fact that I have used Botox. I use Botox. I've done videos on Botox. My feeling is if I'm going to use it, I'm going to show Mm -hmm. how it can be used, where it can be used. Um, You know, the advancement in those products, whether it's Botox or Dysport, which is now the new competitor to Botox, 
um, you know, it's kind of amazing as to what it can do. And it's, it's not just for, you know, most people think of it as forehead to minimize the horizontal lines and the crow's feet. But I also discovered, you know, I'm a tooth grinder and I've had um, really bad TMJ and, and pain in my masseter muscle. And they inject Botox in the masseter muscle to help with that pain and to lessen the discomfort from that. So, you know, there are also interesting uses for Botox. I mean, Botox has been used to even help sharpen a jawline, to help with neck bands. You, you know, get it in your hands if you have sweaty palms. You get it in your hands, you get it in your <laughs> armpits. I mean, it, it, so there are all these different uses for it, yeah. um, FDA approved and cleared. The, the interesting, um, and I won't even say it's a debate, but there has been a movement toward I guess what some would call natural aging, right? Mm -hmm. Just embrace what it, embrace what you have, you know, let it go, let your gray hair come in, don't use anything. But here's my question, you know, well, what's natural? I mean, if you're using in any any skincare regimen that's got retinol or creams, well, that's not natural because you're actually using products to help work with wrinkles mm -hmm. and erase those. If you're doing any kind of hair coloring, well, that's not natural. I mean, I just, I, I really hate judgment mm -hmm. on anybody, period. Yeah. I think everybody has to walk their own walk when it comes to aging and how you want to embrace it and mm -hmm. what you want to do or not do. Mm -hmm. And I know I personally, I don't have any skin in the game in anybody else's business. If you want to age a certain way, bravo. If that's how you feel good, Bravo. If I want to do it a certain way, I would hope that you would accept that and and let that be. Mm -hmm. I know you have a hard time with that, you know, <laughs> because I hear about it. Um, I don't do a lot. You know, people have assumed that I've done far more than I have. I'm sure. Um, but I certainly believe in all of these little micro dosing treatments. Yep. I, I mean, there's probably a better word for it, but there are so many little small enhancements. Small enhancements. I mean, from skin treatments to PRP to skin pen to all these things that you can do in a dermatologist's mm -hmm. office to really help yeah. the skin to what I have at home, you know, the Kenzie laser, the Nira laser, you know, all of these wonderful things that can help with skin pigmentation or hair loss or, or this or that, you know, it just depends on the walk that you want to walk. But my feeling is, you know, for her, do what, do what you want to do. Do what makes you feel good. You know, mm -hmm. e explore it. If you don't like it, guess what? It's going to wear off in four to six months and you never have to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think it's everybody's unique individual walk and there should be absolutely no sh judgment or shame in any of it. Yeah, I could not agree more. <laughs> Thank you. 100%. <laughs> and I totally agree that I think people really don't understand like if you haven't looked into Botox, I think there's a really weird like stigma around it yeah. and it's used for so many things and it's, yes. you know, I don't know. I, I think you'd, everyone would be shocked to know the amount of people that actually do get Botox, men and women. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. It's and I'm so finding crazy. it at a much younger age. Oh, I mean, I started people, late in the game compared. A lot of people are starting in their twenties and early thirties. So many people that I've talked to that do get Botox tell me I should start now mm -hmm. and do it like preventatively. Yeah. Um, so Maybe that'll be the next video. There we go. <laughs> Corey gets about <laughs> Although I'm not quite sure where, <laughs> but I get you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Next caller. Hi, Dominique. This is Debbie Bodine. I'm from Katy, Texas. And first of all, I just want to thank you so much for your transparency on everything. And I enjoy uh, watching your videos and YouTube and just learning a lot of things. Um, what I want to do is I'd like to tap into your spiritual part of your life. Mm -hmm. And my pastor, Greg Mott, has been on a series at my church called My Life Verse. And I want you to be thinking about what your life verse would be. Mm -hmm. He's given us like four questions to ask ourselves. And one is, what verse of scripture is a deep encouragement to you? What verse of scripture encourages your passion for Christ? What verse of scripture do you want to see or have seen lived out in your life? And what verse of scripture would you like quoted at your memorial service or wear as a piece of jewelry? Oh. So I would just like curious to know as to what your life verse would be. Um, mine is Galatians 2.20. It could probably be, depending on the season of your life, 
There's so many great verses in the Bible, uh, but just wanted to know what yours would be. Okay, Dominique, hope you have a great, great rest of the day and a great week, and I appreciate everything that you do so much, and you're just such a a great example of joy and peace and uh, love for everybody and for everything and for your your Savior, and uh, thank you for that. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Praise you. Praise God. Um, such a good, she gave me homework to do. Yeah. I don't even know if I have the answer to that. There are so many wonderful Bible verses mm-hmm. and she, she nailed it when she said there are so many verses that fit us for the season yeah. that we're in, mm-hmm. in our lives. And mm-hmm. so I think if, if I were to find verses now, it would probably be verses that are applicable to where I am. So I'm going to have to get back to her on that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I could quote one right away yeah. or, you know, we could, we could take a it. pause and then I could find one. Yeah. What If you want, we can do that. Yeah. You want to go look for one? I'm going to go look for one. Okay. Yes. Cause there are a couple that are coming to my mind, but I want it to be the right get one. Get them right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to hit the pause button. I'm going to get back with that answer. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Okay, did you find it? I did. And, you know, and it's ironic because it hasn't changed. And it was inside Life Makeover, Chapter 5, which is faith, uh, fear, faith, and forget about it. And it's how I started the chapter. And it's still the verse that leads me today. Mm. And it's from the book of Isaiah. And it reads, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I think that just when I think about, my gosh, my life, everything I've been through, yeah. everything, everything. And again, it, it goes back to the, to the caller about the hair and the divorce. It's about fear mm-hmm. and just having that belief system that God has us in the palm of his hand. Yeah. And fear not. Mm-hmm. fear not and we just need to believe in that yeah. and then we can move forward yeah. so I, it's still the same yeah the i love that and i think it is ironic that you know we were both like yeah the seasons and you're like wait no this is it's still, still so, applicable yeah right? i love that me too um okay next caller hi dominique my name is lisa from evansville indiana my question is what is your favorite vitamin C serum, and over-the-counter retinol. I appreciate all your tips and who you are as a person. Thanks again. Oh, wow. Lisa, so many choices. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't even know if I have a favorite. I, I will just share with you. So I have in my bathroom, there's a an acrylic container that rotates that I know the one, you know, the one, (laughs) my spinning, my spinning product wheel and it has, okay. So I'll tell you my top products in there and it has all of those. Paula's choice makes great retinol and vitamin C products. Mm. So they're in there. Um, Sunday Riley, great retinol and vitamin C products. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's U Beauty, which is a new line that I've discovered, and I haven't shared it yet because I like to use a product for a while yeah. to be able to see, you know, how it's working. Very interesting line, very effective line. Mm. Um, so I would say those are the ones that I use the most, mm-hmm. and they seem to be the most effective. And sometimes I bounce around and alternate between them, but all of them superb lines with great retinols and vitamin C. Yeah, for sure. And, zero. I, and high percentages. Yeah. And we've definitely, you've done a couple of videos, I think on both of those subjects. I so definitely have. We'll link those so you can check those out. Cause I feel like all of that information is still yeah. kind of stood the test of time. You bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next caller. Hi, Dominique. My name is Patty Knapp. I'm over 60. I live in the village of Florida And I'm so excited about this. I've been following you for a long time. I have loved you from the get-go. I'm just proud of you for what you've done and accomplished. Um, However, I think it's getting a little bit commercialized, but I understand because that's what you get paid on. But anyways, my question to you is, do you find that men are intimidated not only by your beauty and intellect, but by your social media platform, Mm. especially if they are a private person. 
and therefore would not want a relationship with you because they're so private and you're just the opposite with the social media platform. I'm just curious about that if you've ever had that happen to you. God bless you. Love you. Keep it up, girl. Mm. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings to you. Um, what a good question. Yeah, that's well, a really good question. Really, I, you know, I I honestly haven't been faced with it mm-hmm. yet. Yeah. Um, not everybody. Well, here's the other thing too, and I've I've really thought about when somebody comes into my life in a romantic way, mm-hmm. will I ever do what I did in the past? Will I ever be as public about it? And the answer to that is probably not or not to the extent that I was. Yeah. That I just, I want to have a personal life mm-hmm. and I want it to be mine. And it's not to say that I, I won't share like, hey, you know, I've met somebody or this yeah. or that. But I, I, I honestly don't know if I will feel as comfortable mm-hmm. being so public with it, mm-hmm. let alone somebody else. Somebody yeah. else may be like, hey, yeah, I'm great with this. Let's, you know, bring the camera. And I may be thinking, mm, not so fast. Yeah. <laughs> so it may actually be more me than the other person, mm-hmm. but I've never, I've never been hit with, you know, your persona, your public life is too much for me. And I don't want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. To me, that is that's highly negotiable on my end for what I just said. I don't know if I want my future partner or whatever to be as public as yeah, I to want this for themselves. Too. Absolutely. Like, I yeah. don't. And it's, you know, it's gotten harder. It has gotten, um, just not as, I mean, we're hearing wonderful, sweet, beautiful calls and this is great, but not everybody is like that. And I wouldn't necessarily want to subject a person in my life that I love yeah. to the hatred and the mean spiritedness that's out there. It's unfair. Yeah. Yeah. So I think my, my feeling will be very, very different. It's going to come more from me than maybe the other person, yeah. but I want it to be a mutual decision mm-hmm. no matter what. Um, and then she made, she made the comment about things being more, you know, commercial, but she understands. And that's something that we, you and I yeah. addressed in a recent video about the business of this and that I have, shifted it into full-time YouTube podcasting and it is a business. And I thought, you know, we produced a very informative video Mm -hmm. about how this works and why that's necessary in order for me to sustain. Um, Otherwise I can't be here without the business side of it, but Mm -hmm. we're always very mindful of the viewer and how much and all of that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I do think for you, yes, a lot of your life is obviously public. Yeah. But I think that you do a great job of keeping things that should be, have to be, need to be private, mm-hmm. private, and people still feel like they have full access to you and know yes. tons about you and you're an open book when it comes to yourself. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, intimate details of maybe your life or your son, you mm-hmm. know, like with styles and things like yep. that. People know that you have a son. You're not afraid to talk about him. It's not yep. a hidden secret. Yes. But it, you're just, you know. Very private yeah, with him. Yeah, you know. And so I think maybe, you know, like, yeah, you put your life out there, but I think that you have, in Boundaries. my opinion, good, yeah, you make good choices about what what is out there and mm. will stay fully transparent to everyone. But it's like about you, not about anything yes. else or anyone else in your life. Yeah. You know. I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay, next caller. Hi, Dominique. I'm Selena Ellis, a longtime follower and fan. I just want to say I'm excited about your podcast, especially because my mom reminds me of your mom, and we remind each other of you and your mom. Although I'm older, my mom is a fabulous, fabulous beauty. She's 82 Mm -hmm. and she doesn't look it at all. And we have lots of fun together. And I would love nothing more than for both of us to be able to listen to you and learn more about your beautiful uh, beauty tips, spiritual tips, everything inside and out. We really are fans and I'd like you to give us a chance if you could. Thanks again. Love you. Bye. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, we won't give out her phone number. Yeah, we'll, but, we'll bleep that. We'll bleep that. But thank you. Um, you know, just keep watching, Selena, you and your mother. Um, I love the fact that there are parallels in age and the nature of the relationship. Mm-hmm. And that's wonderful. And I love having my mom on and, and bringing her to you in a variety of ways, you know, whether the podcast or popping up every once in a while in a YouTube video. But she's um, she is the life of the party. I mean, I had her up here 4th of July. You know, she met everybody where I live. Um, she was at a party for Holly the other day. I mean, she's just, she amazes me. She's gonna be 88 this year. Mm. I'm like, you know, I'm leaving. She's staying. I mean, she just <laughs> keeps incredible. going. It really is quite, quite incredible. So I feel very, very blessed in that respect. Um, naturally, you know, with age, there are things that you have to manage. Nothing is perfect, mm-hmm. but I think that we are, we are doing well and, you know, we are kind of managing aging together Mm -hmm. and what that looks like as a mom and a daughter and I'm grateful she's two blocks away yeah absolutely and if um you want to meet Dominique or her mom I would say just keep posted on social media I feel like we do a lot of different events in Houston and meet and greets or book signings and things like that and your mom attends about 80% Every, oh, um, <laughs> shoot, uh, like 99. <laughs> She's always there. She is always there. And you know, that's like an added bonus for everyone's like, your mom's You're here too. I know. She's off hugging people always. and taking yes. pictures. <laughs> it's the best. She is the best. She is Thank so you. fun. She is. Well, hello, Dominique Saxa. My name is Rebecca Watson. I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I just have to say, I am probably one of your biggest, biggest, biggest fans ever. Um, we have so much in common. Um, we are both only children, very close to our mothers. Um, I am a mother of three boys. I know you have one son, but I have um, three boys, two pregnancies. I've had, my oldest is 26 and I have twins that are 25. Um, went through all kind of infertility to get them, so we're so blessed. Um, I've been happily married for 31 years also. Um, I'm a group fitness trainer. And I've taught all of all things fitness, except I've never taught yoga. But I, you kind of turned me on to the hot yoga lately. And we are the same exact age, 56. And I just started recently, a few months ago, and I am hooked. I go to my hot yoga class mm-hmm. every day that I don't teach. Um, and I just absolutely love it. And I feel it's going to be like a long, long, long-term thing for me to do um, Till I grow through my 80s. Um, I love your style. I think we have a very similar style, which I think is so cool. I love your clothing. Um, a lot of things I actually have in my closet that you've worn, and it's just so crazy. Um, I love all of your recommendations, all beauty and wellness. I have tried just about all of them. Um, some examples are your eyelashes, your ideal eyelashes, creams, undergarments. I listen to all of your podcasts mm. every Monday. And um, I, I, and I tell my friends also to listen to you because I just think you're the bomb. Uh, I'm one of your biggest fans, and I would love to meet you in person someday. That's just like kind of my goal. I know you had that big retreat in Texas, and that was not. Um, like we were actually away at that week, and I wasn't able to make that. But boy, I'll tell you what, I would love, love, love to be involved in some in something like that in the future. Um, I love hearing about all of your favorite things. I've been on my computer, too, all morning, um, trying to find my some really cool things from Amazon Prime, and, I, and I'm going to order some of your ideas. And <laughs> I just want to tell you that it's whatever you're doing, you just keep doing. And I'd love to hear about your favorite things, whether it be health and wellness or fashion or uh, HRT. Uh, all of, Oh, and by the way, I've started that, too, but just because of you, you kind of gave me the courage to to start that and that has helped me unbelievably um so i love hearing about all of your favorite things in life um i follow you like a crazy woman but (laughs) i just wanted to to uh give you a buzz and say you know what you are the bomb keep doing what you're doing let us all ladies know that what you love because they are truly truly amazing um all right, and then I think she got cut, cut off, off because it's a three-minute voicemail. <laughs> Rebecca, but, oh, you need a badge. She she's like a number you. one fan sash or Seriously, something. Seriously, how sweet. Wow, that's amazing. So nice. That Honestly, that just filled my – there is nothing that I need to say. Rebecca, my heart is full. 
from you. I receive it. I thank you for it. I'm grateful for you. And what can I say? I will, as, as I produce content, I've got now a vision of Rebecca in my head, um, who's, who's receiving everything that I'm talking about. So thank you. That means the world to me. Yeah. And I will say you are very aware that there are fans and followers everywhere. And yes. so we're, we're brainstorming on how to meet people and yes. get out there and get to different locations. We are. And in Houston. fact, you know, the other thing is, is that we didn't have an international number. I had so many people from other countries say yes. how, you know, I wanted to leave a message too. Yeah. So we're going to try to figure that out the next that. time around to see if we can get a WhatsApp number or, or, or figure it out Absolutely. so we can get international calls as well. So we apologize for that, but uh, we're learning as we go. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next caller. Hi, Dominique. My name is Raquel, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. My question to you is, what do you think about wedding guest invites, the etiquette around it? I'm getting ready to plan a wedding for my daughter, and as you probably know, weddings are extremely expensive. We're wanting to do a formal affair, and that means cutting the guest list quite a bit. I've had friends already making comments about being invited and whatnot. Can you tell me what your feelings are on inviting guests to a wedding and how you handle it with the people that you cannot include? Thank you. Love you, Dominique. Bye. Love you back. Boy, That that's a tough one. Ooh, <laughs> that is so hard. I, I remember when Nick and I were getting married, and we had we had about 300 well, I can't even imagine. We had actually more because the kids, their friends started showing up at the end. So I think at some point we hit like 345, <laughs> but who's counting? But <laughs> we knew it was, it was going to be around 300. And there were so many people. And I'll tell you what, it was so stressful yeah. making that list. And what happens is you start grouping. It's kind of like, oh, I hate to even say this, but it's like the A list, the B list, yeah. and the C list. But but in a way, you sort of have to mm -hmm. based on, all right, you know, the, the friend's family, you know, yeah, that obviously top, is first. Yeah. Your, the, your, your inner circle yeah. is top. Then it probably spreads out to colleagues, coworkers, mm -hmm. right? And then beyond that, it's, you know, it's your next tier. And so I think, you know, it's, God, it's just so tricky to handle. But I think what you do is, you try to say as little as possible about it, first of all. Mm -hmm. Get those invitations out there and then start seeing the RSVPs that come in because you're going to get some wiggle yeah. room with the RSVPs. Not sure. everybody's going to be able to make it. So people who aren't as close as your inner circle, now there's room to kind of funnel in some of that. Mm -hmm. But how you do that is, again, yeah. your discretion. And it's it's tough. My my motto is you can't please everybody. Never. This is your wedding or your child's wedding. This is about either you or them. Mm -hmm. And it's not about appeasing the rest of the world. And I know it can get really, really tricky with all of that. But, you know, my feeling is, is you just have to let people know, you know, we've, we've hit, this is, we've got a max number. We're already, you know, at that number with just the inner circle and their friends. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's for a child, their friends, the bride's friends, I mean, it's just, it's massive. So I think the best way to say is that, you know, it's, we're already full mm -hmm. and, you know, we would love for you to be there, but we just aren't. <laughs> I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, my thoughts. I know that and I'm interested to hear her daughter's thoughts on that because yes. uh, when my sister got married and even my brother, um, it was it was funny watching my parents because my parents want to invite everyone that they know. Right. And they're like, that's just how it's done. Your parents like, yeah. you know, kind of throw it and we invite all of our, our friends. friends. And then my siblings are kind of like, but they're not our friends. Like we know them, but yeah. like they, and it was just like a big back and forth. And mm -hmm. so it kind of came down to a, how many people can fit at the venue right. first of all. Number one. Um, and then I think my siblings just kind of said like these, this is my A list, my B list. Mm -hmm. And then if there's room on the C list for your people. Right. And I think my siblings threw it out there of like, if there's going to be this many people, and they're mostly your people, yeah. then you have to put in more money for this. Because like, I don't even know some of these people. I've talked to them once in my life. They right. met me when I was born. Like, yep. And so I know like, um, just seeing both of my siblings go through that, that was a discussion between my <laughs> parents because they were like, no, this is the way it's done. And they're like, well, this is not the way it's done anymore. And I just want yeah. my closest people there and everyone that I know there. And so there's definitely a middle ground that you can come to. But I think uh, 
parent to child, it's, you have different mindsets on yes. who's right. And then it's like, you know, from their perspective, it's like, it's my wedding. And the parents are like, well, this is kind of like my, my wedding we're too. For yes. It. yes. Like, and so, yeah, I think that um, you just have to come to a middle ground with everybody. And I think yeah. that there is not a way to please everybody, but a way to please parent and child. Yes. And you guys can reach it's, a middle ground. It's a, it's a constant ongoing negotiation yeah. and dialogue. No it doubt. Is. It is. And let me wait till you do the seating chart because then that's the whole... Oh! <laughs> just don't get me started. Okay. Next caller. Hello. My name is Lori. You are U-H-E-R. I am 61 and I love following you on Instagram. My question is, because you had mentioned this before about haters or um, messages that you get. Um, I think that viewers, and I am <clears throat> curious on how you deal with it. How do you keep positive? Um, how do you not let it affect you? Um, does it affect you? You don't know. Um, and hopefully you can pick me to um, ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lori, we picked you because it's a really good question. Um, you know, I have one of my favorite sayings is other people's opinions of you are not your business. Mm -hmm. And I remind myself of that always because it's not what other people speak about me. It's what I feel about me. It's what God says about me. And that right there just gets rid of anybody else's cast of judgment on me. And if it becomes mean and salacious, which oftentimes it does, I have to often remind myself that it's not about me, it's about them. Mm -hmm. So you really have to get into, I guess, the psychology of the matter and understand where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Now, does it make it pleasant? Does it, does it make it nice to see those things? Yeah. Of course not. But I don't internalize it. What I guess what bothers me the most about it is all of the women who chime in on my platform and comment, now start seeing all of this. And what happens is they start coming to my defense or other people will chime in and, and say more mean things. Yeah. It's like somebody opened the door, so now I'm gonna go there. Yeah. But but really more often than not, you know, my viewers who are there, and it's, it's a positive inspirational space. So mm -hmm. for some reason people don't like that or they don't like me. And I get that, not everybody's gonna like you or what you yep. do or say. That's that's life. Totally Learned that in television news a long time ago, which I guess is why I've got such thick I was skin. Just thinking you're that right? you've done doing this. I mean, you've been on YouTube for almost ten years, but yeah. it's been in the public eye for my whole career. Years. Seriously, that's just I, yeah. I think you've definitely built up that thick skin. I'm like a big old turtle hanging out in a pond. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just gonna bounce off of my back. So if you're trying to get to me, sorry, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Um, but I do. I feel badly for for my viewers who have such sweet intentions and kind hearts, and they have to read that ugliness. So. You know, and, and there's all of this debate about, well, do you leave the comment in? Are you censoring somebody if you take it out? Um, you know, if somebody disagrees with maybe a viewpoint or a presentation or whatever, I will leave that in. Yeah. You, are, you are allowed to disagree. But if it is a mean, vitriolic, personal attack, yeah. I'm sorry, I have absolutely no tolerance for that. Mm -hmm. And I will say this is my platform. And I have the right, and Courtney and I comb through those comments, and anything that just hits below the belt or anything that is non-factual or rumor-based or whatever, it's going to go. Yeah. So that's, that's how we handle it. Yeah. But personally, I've learned, and I learned a long time ago, to never internalize those things. Yeah, no, you are. You're very, very good about that. Thanks. <laughs> I've had lots of practice. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Rochelle. I'm calling from the great city of Atlanta. I don't have a question right now on the tip of my tongue, but I do have a request. And the request is that you do this kind of segment often because I generally have a million questions, but for the life of me, I can't think of one. <laughs> However, everyone, as time goes by, are going to have really good thought-provoking questions mm -hmm. so it's um i think a great service if you could do this kind of i don't know option show whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. at least i don't know maybe once a month or every 
I don't know. I don't know if once a week is too much, but um, often because, uh, you know, we gals are getting a little bit older, so, <laughs> you know, time is of the essence. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. I love that. Yeah, she's like, do this more. <laughs> do this more. I don't have a question, but I love the concept. Uh, we will. And it's it's why we started doing Q&A videos mm-hmm. in YouTube. Um, and we don't do them as frequently as once a week. Usually we wound up doing them every once every three months or so, just yeah. because it seemed like that built up enough time to mm-hmm. allow for fresh, new, different questions. I personally love the concept. I yeah. love the interaction. You know, it reminds me of like a live call-in radio mm-hmm. show where you get to interact with viewers. Yeah. Um, so yes, this is a format that we will definitely incorporate. How frequently? We'll just sort of base it on the types of questions that are coming in and and how unique it would make each episode, yeah. right? Based 100%. on those questions. Yeah, and it'd be, I mean, we could honestly get a question that is an entire episode, just kind of delving into it or, yeah. you know what I mean? Things like that. Getting so, experts to talk about it. Thousand percent. So I think, you know, yeah. You always say it's it's you know it's up to the audience and you want to give them what they want. Yes. So I would say you know if this gets a really good response and maybe now that people understand like how this is working and you mm-hmm. leave a voicemail and we'll we'll answer it. You know what I mean? Then I think maybe we'll get you know flooded with more yeah <laughs> more questions and then yeah we can make it like a regular thing or every other month. Or I would something. love that. Like you said, I just love hearing their voices so and where cool. they're from. That yes. is, that's bringing it home for 100%, me. Hundred percent. Yeah. Just yeah. like a plan on here and yes. there. I'm like. Oh, Wait, this is so cool. cool. It is great. It's awesome. My name is Kathy Michelon. I live in San Jose, California. And my question, Dominique, is you've told us a couple times the name of your lip gloss, and I haven't been able to write it down. Also, I'm curious, my lipstick comes off after I've worn it for like maybe five or ten minutes. What's the secret to keeping lipstick on for a long time? Thank you. I enjoy watching your shows, your podcasts. Bye. Thank you. Great question. Love having you from California. Um, so a couple of things. If it's the, I'm not sure which lip gloss she's referring to, but the one that I wear the most is the um, pairing that I did with Gentry Kelly. So it's the Dominique Be Blessed look, which is the Be Blessed lipstick. And then uh, we use My Two Cents lip gloss mm-hmm. on top of that, which is a really pretty kind of a gold shimmer. It's a great layering lip gloss, looks really good on top of a lot of different lipsticks. So yeah. that's the one that I wear practically all the time. To help lipstick stay, it gets trickier as we get older, especially with the vertical lines that start showing up above the lip. So really setting things with um, powder is really important and using a liner as well to keep that border in and not getting too, too creamy with the lipstick either. So there's that fine line. You don't want it too emollient. You don't want it too matte. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely say, and I I will take a little bit of foundation and cover the lip. Mm -hmm. Then I will um, set it with powder, loose powder, border it with a pencil, even shade in a little bit with the pencil because I want that pencil and the lipstick color to be as close in, co- in tone and color as possible. Mm-hmm. And then go over with a lighter lipstick and keep the lip gloss away from the outer part of the lip because that's what's gonna start leaking and bleeding, um, especially as we get older. So just a tiny tap of lip gloss in the center of the lip and the top and, and blot. And that should do it and it should hold things in place, especially mm-hmm. as we get older. Yeah, thousand percent. But I would always say just keep it in your purse, keep it in your and bag. Reapply. And reapply. <laughs> That's because what I do. You take a sip of anything I know, or and eat it's something fun. and it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, there's a lot of great brands, but just inevitably, it's going to go. come off. Yes. <laughs> just no keep, matter what kind of lips keep you touching got. touching it up. And how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yes. <laughs> Next caller. Hi, Dominique. So nice of you to do this for us. Uh, my name is Vicki Madonna. I am from Augusta, Georgia. Uh, my question is, if, are you still using the tretinoin? And if you are, have you increased the strength or are you at the maximum strength? And after you use the tretinoin at night, do you put anything else on your face? Do you add a moisturizer mm-hmm. or any other serums or just use the tretinoin as your nighttime routine? Um, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. And I, I love all your content and everything you bring to us. And it's been a real blessing. Would love to be able to come to Houston sometime and actually meet you. Also loved your book. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. I'd love to give you a big squeeze too. Um, The tretinoin question, it's a great one. So there are different percentages. Um, I am up to the strongest 0.1%. Now, I will tell you this. I 
am not using it during the summer months because I've been spending more time outside and you're not supposed to be in the sun and using such a high percentage of tretinoin. But tretinoin is retinoid. So we talked about the interview and we can link the interview with Dr. Marjorie Nigro that we did. The yeah. difference retinol 101 was such an informative video. So educational. <laughs> so educational. I need to have Marjorie on the podcast yeah. too. She's so great. So the differences between retinol and retinoid, retinol is what you will find in beauty products. Mm -hmm. It is a more diluted version of retinoid. Retinoid is the prescription. So I'm at the highest percentage and you kind of work your way there because it will cause the, the higher strength you go, the more cell turnover that you get. You use it at nighttime. So to answer her question, you take a pea size amount and you literally just kind of tap, tap on your cheeks, on your forehead, your chin, you rub it in. I then put a moisturizer on top of that because the skin needs it. Um, you can do an eye cream if you want, but, but here's the other thing too. You can actually do that tiny bit of tretinoin around your eyes. Just don't get too close because it really helps with those fine lines around the crow's feet. And again, just put a little bit of moisturizer, not too much because at nighttime things tend to creep in yeah. toward the eye. And have you ever noticed if you get too much cream mm -hmm. around your eyes, you wake up in the morning with red eyes because yeah, too much so. product got in there. Mm -hmm. So figure it out. Your skin tells you everything you need to know. If it's getting too red, too irritated, back down. Don't push it, you know. So for me, I'm now using retinol products in the summertime, lower dose. Mm -hmm. um, I still find that it helps. I'm using a ton of sunscreen during the day, you know, even with hanging out by the pool and getting all that exposure. Um, so just listen to your skin, but only use your retinoid and retinol at nighttime, not in the morning. Vitamin C in the morning, sunscreen in the morning, and moisturizer. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now that we got that settled. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next call. Oh, that's funny. Hi. Um, for Dominique, um, let's just say my name is Greta. And my question is, uh, I got a divorce in my 50s. And after we raised, raised the kids, and I was, yeah, I'm super tight with all the kids, even my stepdaughters. Um, but what I'm wondering is now I'm enjoying traveling, but every now and then I have, I have my own place that's up in the mountains away from kind of everybody. Every now and then I think, oh my gosh, did I blow my life up? You know, if I get lonely or whatever, I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm just really enjoying traveling. But every now and then I think, oh my gosh, you know, did I, did I mess it all up? Um, I just wonder if you ever rethink that and, um, you know, just your thoughts on that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a normal. Well, first of all, Greta, thank you for such an intimate question. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very revealing um, and honest and transparent on your behalf. And I appreciate that. And I think a lot of women can relate to that. Um, you know, it's, it's probably hard. I talk to Holly about this a lot because my friend Holly was in a, a long-term marriage two daughters older when she divorced. And so she left for, you know, her reasons and moved on. And I know that she went through a lot of those waves of, you know, did I do the right thing or am I doing the right thing? Um, I, for me, I definitively knew that I was doing the right thing. I, I didn't have any sense of, <gasps> Uh oh, you know, I didn't have that. Now, did I have moments of loneliness, moments of anxiety, moments of fear, moments of uncertainty? Absolutely. You know, when you're going through such a huge life transition like that, you're going to have it. But but it also sounds like she is set up in such a way where she is enjoying mm -hmm. so much beauty in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's clearly enjoying her family. She's enjoying travel. She's got a great place to spend time. And it's usually during those times of alone time where you have reflection and where you have quiet, you sit still with your thoughts. And I think sometimes we can get lost in those thoughts and, and it's like, you know, chasing squirrels in a way. And they can lead us down a little dirt trail where we really didn't need to go. Mm -hmm. You know, we made our decisions for our reasons in the moment. And, you know, if, if you made that decision to act on it, there was obviously a compelling reason for you to do that. You know, in retrospect, we always look back and we reflect. But I think if you can answer to yourself, am I closer to me now? 
Am I closer to my authentic self now than I was then? Am I more at peace now than I was then? Do I feel like I am living the life that I was truly meant to live now mm -hmm. compared to then? Then I think you can honestly answer those questions. Do I feel good in my own skin now? Um, not everything is easy. Not all transition. There are, transitions are hard. I mean, they stink. You know, it's it's you you go through a sense of loss. And then you go through a sense of rebuilding and then gain again. And it's this cycle of loss, rebuild, gain. But even in the place of gain or even in the place of rebuild, do you sometimes reflect on that area of loss? Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Do you sometimes think, oh my gosh, did I let go? Should I not have lost? Life is about that cycle. You're going to go through it. So I think, you know, if she can answer those questions and be at peace with that, then yeah. she probably made the right decision. Yeah, and I think it's really easy, too, in times that you are second-guessing things or you're mm -hmm. feeling lonely is that you start remembering all of the good times. You romanticize what yeah, was. so much. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, not to just say forget about those, but just like you said, like you, you left for a reason or yeah. ended for a reason. Um, and so try to, you know, keep that in mind too. Keep it in perspective. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, we do. We, I, we, you and I have both been there, yeah. you know, where we just reflect and it's like, ah, oh. And you do, you tend to romanticize things mm -hmm. and you have to just remember, uh, journaling, by the way, is so good yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I've started to do. And I mean, literally journal verbatim yeah. conversations and things and how I felt. Yeah. And it that eliminates the ability to romanticize something. Mm -hmm. Because if you can actually go back and reflect on that moment itself and what you wrote and how you felt, it's like, oh, whoa, okay. Well, now I know why I'm sitting here today. I yeah, get this. Yeah, you always tell me to journal. Um, you I, need a journal. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're winding down. Yes, we have our last caller. <laughs> Someone just called. Seriously? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's see what we get. Okay, <laughs> um, okay here we go. Yes, uh, this is Eva Rustin, and I uh, so enjoy listening to you, and uh, we actually have the same birthday, June the 11th. Huh. I am a little older than you, though. I'm 64, so I enjoy so much all the information that you have, and I'll enjoy hearing your podcast, and uh, just wanted to leave you that message. Aww. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Well, you too. And thank you for being a part of my podcast. 100%. That's so nice. And happy late birthday. Yes. Happy belated birthday, my Gemini twin. That's awesome. On that note, um, just so many wonderful comments and questions. Yeah. And I, I love this format. I'm so, so cool. glad we did it. Mm -hmm. I've got a feeling there's going to be more to come. Yes. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I really cannot express enough how much we listen to you and value your opinion and what you want to hear on this podcast. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to put any ideas that you have in the comment section for us. We read through it. Um, if you have an idea about a subject matter, we will start digging and see if we can find guests that can accommodate and really have a full discussion on what it is you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I, I just greatly appreciate that. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Uh, again, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts, it's so important that you rate, review, subscribe there as well, and share me. You know, it was so wonderful hearing all these women mm -hmm. say, I'm sharing you with my friends. And oh gosh, it's it's so great. That's how we grow the community. That's, that's how we can get new people in and give them the information that they're looking mm -hmm. for. So yeah. Thank and, you. Yeah, and we'll put the number in the description. So if you if you miss this one, we'll put the number to call. Um, and like you said, we'll work on an international number. Yes. But for now, we have this number that we'll include. Um, and feel free to call and leave a voicemail. And maybe you'll be the guest on the next episode. Yes, of Be My Guest yes. <laughs> on Over 50 and Flourishing. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank Perfect. you, my dear, for of everything. Of course, anytime. I appreciate you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.